Hi friends, this is Brother Sam with our Handfuls of Purpose video series. And today we want to look at a, a message entitled, The Swelling of the Jordan. I want you to turn with me in Jer to Jeremiah chapter 12 <clears throat> and verse 5. <clears throat> it says here, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? Well, my first question is, what is the swelling of the Jordan? Well, history teaches us that the swelling of the Jordan simply meant when rain would come and the waters of Jordan would swell and overflow its banks. Consider with me Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, where we read, it says there, And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Wow. Now that sure brings some revelation, doesn't it? Not only do we understand that Jordan overflows its banks, that means the water just increases <clears throat> and overflows and the river can be seen no more because the water is rushing inland, that this happens during the time of harvest. Now, if we believe that the Feast of Passover is a type of salvation and being born again, and that the Feast of Pentecost has its fulfillment in our life, in the baptism in the Holy Spirit, then what is the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the Feast of Fullness, the Feast of Ingathering? I believe the swelling of the Jordan is the type of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, Let's look at this for a moment. You see, when the water would overflow the banks of Jordan and it would begin to, to just mass all into the woods and surrounding areas, history tells us that the beasts or the wild beasts that were in those places would rush inland or come towards the town or whatever. Now, the Lord spoke to me many years ago about that and said... Before this, or as the swelling of the Jordan takes place, and you and I, if we're waiting on the Feast of Tabernacles, that last great move of God to bring fullness, it's going to be preceded by, during the time of harvest, the swelling of the Jordan. So what comes first? Not the waters of Jordan, but the evil beasts that are coming inland. Did you hear that? Now, the Lord spoke to me many years ago, and he says, those that can survive that last great onslaught of warfare from Satan, those who remain standing, then will be overwhelmed and caught up in the swelling of the glory of God as Jordan overflows its banks. The last great move of God that is waters to swim in. Hallelujah. But let's consider the first part of this verse quickly. <clears throat> if thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, how can you contend with horses? Now, folks, you have to understand that these are different levels. Footmen, horses, swelling of the Jordan. I believe these are levels of demonic warfare. The footman would speak of everyday demons, that the, you know, the lower class of evil spirits. But then you get to the horses, and we find that the horses of the apocalypse in Revelation 6, 1 through 8, <clears throat> and Zechariah 6, 1 through 7, speak of poverty, famine, war, and death. These great principalities and powers, these horses are going to be coming against the people of God, and we're going to have to be able to overcome war, famine, 
poverty, and death. But if you can't run with the footman, you can't even deal with the lesser demons of lust and, uh, you know, whatever, temptation. <clears throat> How are you going to deal with major devils like war and poverty and famine and death? Far too many of us, <clears throat> and I'm including myself, far too many of us spend most of our time fighting with little footmen. <clears throat> it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. These little devils that keep us occupied so that we're not pressing towards the mark. So we're busy arguing with one another and not doing the king's business. I call on you to rise up and shake yourself from those footmen. If thou hast run with footmen and they've wearied thee, what can you do? How will you contend with horses? How are you going to fight principalities when you can't even deal with little evil spirits? God is preparing us line upon line, precept upon precept, dealing after dealing, wilderness after wilderness, to be prepared to overcome the footmen so that as we overcome the footmen and we face the horses, yeah, as we begin the battle, we may fall, but ultimately we shall arise and get the victory over the horses. Are you listening to me? We can and shall and will have victory over war, poverty, famine, and death. The Bible says in Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. We're not hoping for it. It's a fact. Deliverance is coming to the true sons of God. <clears throat> so whatever you are, whatever you're doing, don't be condemned and let the devil kick you around. Repent. Get cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Let God pull and wash you and purge you from all uncleanness. And then you get up and you start marching again. And this time overcome when Satan comes against you. And then you'll find you'll be able to deal with the principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in heavenly places. You'll be able to contend with the horses. And in Revelations 12, we find that a man-child there, in verse 5, is caught up to God and to his throne. And the very next thing <clears throat> we see happening is that Michael and his angels, Greek for messengers, fight and cast Satan out of the second heaven. I believe, folks, that the bride is the man-child, and that as we're caught up to God and to his throne, we join Michael and his angels <clears throat> in kicking Satan out of the second heaven. Hallelujah! Think of all your family members tormented by devils, how your life has been tormented by the devil. I'm telling you, we can deal with these footmen. We can contend with horses. The swelling of the Jordan is coming. The last great move of God is upon us. But first, we must endure this assault of demon warfare. We must endure it and overcome in it. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The Bible says, and if we do and when we do, because in Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, the next thing to hit us will be the glorious water, the glory of God that will bring us waters to swim in. May God bless you, my friend, prepare you, for the Feast of Tabernacles and the swelling of the Jordan. Bless you.